Hi guys. So we're going to begin the reading of the children's Homer. I'm going to give you a little background information. The children's Homer combines the stories from the Iliad and the Odyssey. Those were both um, great, famous, epic poems. But this story, however, will not be po told in poetic form. It's going to be, it was written in the prose. So we're going to read this. It tells, it actually combines the two stories. It tells the story of Odysseus from his, his participation in the Trojan War, which was um, what the Iliad is about, and that carries through all the way to his long and challenging journey home, which is the story of the Odyssey. Um, we're also going to meet Achilles, who was aided by the gods who waged war against the Trojans. The story will take us through Odysseus's. Um, journey home after the war. Odyssey, as a side note, the word Odyssey comes from this tale from Odysseus, meaning um, home, or long, I'm sorry, meaning long journey. Okay, so we're going to begin reading chapter one. This is the story of Odysseus, the most renowned of all the heroes of Greek poets have told us of, and of Odysseus, his wars, and his wanderings. And this story of Odysseus begins with his son, the youth who was called Telemachus. It was when Telemachus was a child of a month old that a messenger came from Agamemnon, the great king, bidding Odysseus betake himself to the war against Troy that the kings and princes of Greece were about to wage. So they were summoning him to war, and Odysseus did not want to go. The wise Odysseus, foreseeing the disasters that would befall all that entered that war, was loath to go. And so when Agamemnon's messenger came to the island of Ithaca, where Odysseus was king, Odysseus pretended to be mad, and that the messenger Palamedes might believe he was mad, indeed, he did a thing that no man ever saw being done before. He took an ass and an ox and yoked them together to the same plow and began to plow a field. And when he had plowed a furrow, he sowed it, not with seeds that would grow, but with salt. When Palamedes saw him doing this, he was nearly persuaded that Odysseus was mad. But to test him, he took the child, Telemachus, and laid him down in the field in the way of the plow. Odysseus, when he came near to where the child lay, turned the plow aside and thereby showed that he was not a madman. Then had he to take King Agamemnon's summons. And Agamemnon's word was that Odysseus should go to Aulis, where the ships of the kings and princes of Greece were being gathered. But first he was to go into another country to seek the hero Achilles and persuade him also to enter the war against Troy. And so Odysseus bade goodbye to his infant son Telemachus and his young wife Penelope, and to his father Odysseus. And he bade goodbye to his house and his land, and to the island of Ithaca, where he was king. He summoned a council of the chief men of Ithaca, and commended to their care his wife and his child, and all his household. And thereafter he took his sailors and his fighting men with him, and he sailed away. The years went by, and Odysseus did not return. After ten years, the city was taken by the kings and princes of Greece, and the thread of war was wound up. So, ten years have passed. Telemachus is now ten years old, but still we have no sign of Odysseus. He does not return. And now, minstrels come to Ithaca with word of the deaths of, or homecomings of the heroes who had fought in the war against Troy. But no minstrel brought any word of Odysseus, of his death, or his appearance in any land known to men. So his whereabouts are unknown. Nobody knows if he survived or if he had perished in the war. Ten more years went by, and now that infant son, whom he had left behind, Telemachus, had grown up and was a young man of strength and purpose. So we're going to stop here.